Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey guys, Juan here, and we're going to look at Tyler Glass now today and try to break it down a little bit. The way he moves down the hill, it's super duper efficient. He's done a fantastic job, especially after being traded from Pittsburgh to Tampa Bay. He is really just moving better, becoming more an efficient mover, a more dynamic mover. He has increased his athleticism off of the mound to help him onto the mound. All that stuff translates into the type of numbers that he's been posting both tangibly with spin rate and velocity and then on the field, just your typical statistics, wins, losses, ERAs, punch outs, walks, all that type of stuff. So he's really been performing exceptionally well ever since he's gotten to Tampa Bay. And he's a really exciting guy to watch, an ultra competitor, a really, really fun guy to watch. So we're going to dive into his mechanics today from this view right here. Before I get going, if you can please just do me a favor by supporting the channel and smashing that subscribe button down bottom. I would really appreciate it. Now, let's start with this base here. Okay, we see the feet, we see the lower half. Let's just isolate the lower half here. Now, let's start with the base. The biggest thing that I want you to take out of this base is the back leg itself. Right, so we, let's take a peek at the back leg. It looks like he's the type of guy that really likes to preset his foot, his shin, knee and hip okay so everything's already kind of set for him so as we look at his foot the entire foot is into the ground by the spikes on the on his toe how visible they are you can definitely see that he's really digging into the ground with his heel that's something that he might want to feel maybe it's a great cue for him but it's clear to me that he's really like focused into his foot and particularly allowing himself to use the ground as energy by applying those pressures more towards the heel than the toes. So really good job. From there, the feet are, are huge when it comes to the rest of the stance. They almost can dictate the rest of the stance. Things like your shin. So he has a vertical shin here, which is fantastic. And then we get a nice little athletic soft knee with a loaded hip so that hip is dropping back so his hip is dropping back towards the first base bag here in this position here and this is how he starts it's he's basically already presetting his back leg back foot presetting his back hip by cocking those hips back towards the first base bag it's almost like a pre-coil that he has going on with his back leg there so this is something that can allow a pitcher to be super efficient because he's already in a pretty decent spot before leg lift even occurs. So if we get into leg lift here, you see that that back leg like barely even moves. If anything, it coils a little bit further back towards the first base bag, that back hip, but that back leg basically remains strong and stable. I think he just puts himself in a position to succeed from the very beginning by having that preset stance that we just talked about. When we get into the top of his delivery here, we're gonna see a good little drift. So he starts progressing towards home plate. Actively, the muscle groups that we're getting, definitely the back glute, hamstrings are totally firing right here with that back hip coiled back and kind of starting to receive a ton of tension from the rest of his body. So really good job. Now if we just go into his hand placement, again, kind of presetting stuff, check out his hands. His hands barely move. So those are kind of preset too. They actually gradually get a little bit to the right side of his chest, which is totally fine. Uh, if you were to put your hands onto the arm side of the buttons on your jersey, if you're slightly towards the arm side, that's actually a pretty good thing. It's going to allow you to get into an efficient scap load a lot easier. It doesn't mean that's wrong if your hands are somewhere else. It just really presets everything in a manner where you can get into certain movements a lot more efficiently. So that's where I think he gets that from. We get to the bottom of his delivery here. He's in pretty decent rhythm. We get to the bottom and he is just sitting into his back glute. This is a great look here with that front foot just hovering off of the ground. That back hip is still nice and coiled. And if we go back to the back hip, like that back hip is already preset coiled from the beginning. He coils it even further and it kind of just rides that tension 
downhill into the bottom of his delivery. So he's just basically allowing that rubber band to continue to stretch, 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 stretch until it needs to get released. So really, really nice job on his end here. Just a really good dynamic mover. Very strong within his delivery. Uh, all around just great athlete that we have here. Okay, The hands break around the middle of the chest. And we get to full handbrake, which is going to be about, let's go about this frame here. And that hip, again, that back hip is still coiled. And he's basically all the way down the mound at this point. He still has connection of the rubber with his heel there. He's still in a great athletic stance with his back leg. Like By that, I mean that that back leg is really delaying internal rotation. So internal rotation of the back leg. He's really sustaining external rotation of the back leg in this particular pitch. So just outstanding, stay strong, great positions. His hands are moving at the same rate. And again, one of the more impressive things is how he's able to sustain that coil down the mound with his chest right over that back hip. Everything is stacked and loaded over that back hip. Uh, just really an outstanding position that he's in at this moment where everything should be timed out pretty properly as we move forward. So we move into foot strike. Once we get into foot strike, we are in hip to shoulder separation here. So his chest is basically facing the third base bag while his front hip is starting to pop open and that back hip is starting to fly through and towards home plate. That back foot is still, even at foot strike, connected into the rubber. So again, this is ground forces. This is using the ground to your advantage. This is using the rubber to your advantage, using your leverages. He's doing an outstanding job with that at the moment. The timing of his arm slot is very good. He is still going into external rotation with his arm. As you see here, the torso starts rotating and diving over that front leg and the arms getting into external rotation still. Still not at max layback um, once front foot strike occurs. Again, a good thing. You don't want your arm to be too early. You don't want it to be too late. But ideally, we want our arms still floating into external rotation as we are at foot strike. So once we go work through foot strike, we're going to notice that his chest is going to go towards the plate here and over that front foot as we keep going here. So if we take this thing to pitch release, about that frame there, his forward trunk tilt is pretty freakish. His chest is basically pretty close to being parallel to the ground itself, which is, you know, the hamstring mobility that takes to get to this movement is exceptional. It's elite. Uh, something that he's definitely worked on off of the field is just priming his body to get into proper positions here. The glove, we get a clear glove disconnection. It's not truly tucked into his chest. It's just following the rotation of his shoulders and his hand path is matching that on the other shoulder and other hand. As we keep going here, we're gonna get a nice clean follow through over a firmed out front leg. Now a firmed out front leg, if you do not accomplish this movement, it could be a number of different things. Strength and stability can be one. I always think that's a lazy answer because most of the time it's because we're not sequencing properly prior to foot strike. So it may not be that you are weak. It may just be that you are not sequencing properly. Everything isn't moving and rotating at the proper time. Things might be rotating too early, too late. A number of different things that can be happening if you're not achieving this move right here. But the majority of the time, especially if you have been playing baseball your entire life, it isn't a strength and conditioning thing. It's typically a movement thing, the timing of your movements. Um, it doesn't mean that's not going to be strength and conditioning, but I've had so many different clients, I couldn't even tell you how many, who have come in and said, I can't firm out my front side. Everybody tells me that I'm just not strong enough to sustain the energy that I'm producing. If you're producing enough energy and sequencing properly, you will get to this point. I don't care if you're 5'7", 130 pounds, or if you're 6'2", 200 pounds, and you're creating force. Like, you're going to get to this point. And 
Typically, I can get guys to this point just by making them feel. We, we have to track down their deficiencies, of course, but once we track down their deficiencies, we can really hit those home, attack them, and get them to the point that they are using all of their energy properly and everything is translating into the baseball. Continue with the follow-through. I love the glove disconnection. That's some body flow there, and the hand is following through over the glove side hip. Some of my favorite things, and we're finishing around our front leg. So we're not really uberly obsessed with having to land square and cutting our energy short. I am so not a believer in cutting your energy short just to force yourself into a position. Allow your energy to travel to the places that it wants to travel or allow it to travel freely, and you're going to be better off not only with velocity but also health. So that's the glass now breakdown right there. Hope you guys liked it. Again, if you did like it and you learned something out of this video, please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, like, share, comment. I'll see everybody later.